So today we're starting the earliest date, 867, and we picked an African county, which opens up this objective to unite Africa. We have to completely control the region of Africa, and if we do, we get 750 prestige, which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but I thought it would still be a cool objective to go for, and I want to do this in three days, and also kind of do a play-by-play -play of everything I'm doing, so I don't know if it's an achievable goal, but I only have three days to do it, and there's a reason why I will tell you guys at the end of the video. With that, let's get right into it. So my last recording session, I had kind of a light go on, and I was like, oh, that's how you play the game. And it has a lot to do with starting with a four-star diplomacy trait. If you play as just a random crappy character on the map that's only starting with one castle, as we are doing right now, all your starting traits are going to be random, and we're going to be playing as one of these crappy African tribes. But our great leader is not crappy necessarily. He's just, which does happen to be virtuous to the faith we're playing. And not only does that give us one extra piety per month, it makes us start out with an extra 100 piety. Usually you only start out with 100, but just gives us an extra 100, and so does Zealous. Zealous also increases our monthly piety by 20% as well. We also do have Ambitious, which gives us one to everything. It's not really as important as the other two I randomed, but it still will help out. Because we have a huge excess of piety, we're going to divorce our wife. Not before she throws our wedding celebration, though. What she's about to do, it's going to take a few days, and she should throw our wedding celebration. There we go. Because we're playing as a religion that only allows you to have one wife and we can't have any concubines, marriage is kind of the sacred thing and our wife ends up giving us 75 gold or 350 prestige when we do marry her. It's kind of a balancing thing to offset the fact that we can't have multiple wives. We're going to for sure take the 350 prestige and we're going to dump her. Dumping her is going to cost us 100 piety, but it's going to allow us to remarry. That wife sucked anyways. I didn't go over her stats, but yeah, her stats suck. We're now going to find our great leader a new spouse and we're going to sort by inheritable traits. Unfortunately, there were no genius or Herculean wives, but there is a beautiful wife. Beautiful increases diplomacy by 3, fertility by 30%, and attraction by 30, and it's a congenital trait, meaning that we can pass it down to our kids. The only negative with this girl is she is chaste. That lowers her fertility, but that's okay. We're going to marry this girl, and she's about to throw us a wedding celebration as well. Before we do get into the festivities, we're going to start creating men-at-arms regiments with our extra prestige. We got 950 now, and we're about to get 350 more, but we don't need that too. To create all of our men at arms now. We're going to create two regiments of bush hunters and we're going to max out these regiments. We're going to increase the size to three and that's going to cost quite a bit of prestige. But after increasing them both to three, we're pretty much broke on prestige. We're down to 230 and we're starting to lose prestige per month because these bush hunters do cost prestige per month. But these units are absolutely amazing. They're just basically better versions of archers. They do more damage in jungle, which archers do not, and they do more damage in forest and hills. Whereas regular archers only do more damage in hills, these bush hunters also do have five more damage than archers, four more toughness, and they have a bit of pursuit as well. Normal archers do not. Pursuit's pretty nice because after each battle, the enemy will try to run away. And the more pursuit you have, the more casualties you're able to run down after each battle, so you don't have to fight as much. With our extra 230 prestige, we're going to invite some more champions to our court. We can do this once every 10 years, and it will send us three knights with 12 or more prowess to our court. Speaking of our court, we did get fairly lucky at the start. We got a really good guy, Yusuf, in our court. Dude's got 20 prowess, but more importantly, he's got 18 martial. We're going to recruit this guy immediately for 7 gold only, which is going to be most of our gold. And we're going to put this guy on our council because our current marshal blows. He's only got 7. Yusuf's got over double his marshal. And we now have a really excellent marshal who's not going to be organizing levies, actually. This is what I've usually been doing in past playthroughs. And this increases your levy size, garrison size, and reinforcement rate. But since our playthrough here is going to be focused around the bush hunter unit we picked up, we're going to have Yusuf train commanders as that lowers the men at arms maintenance, which is our bush hunters, by 23%. And this one's actually really cool. There's a 6% chance each month that Yusuf finds a new commander or knight. Possible side effects are actually really awesome too. Commanders can gain commander traits and knights can be improved, which is absolutely awesome compared to the side effect of the organized levies. It just gives increased military presence, which is not a very cool thing from what I remember. It's basically more levies, I think, or reinforcement rate or something boring. I don't know, but yeah, organized levies is not fun. Trained commanders is fun. Because our marshal is now so good, we're going to forbid him from going into combat. We click on the champions tab even though he does have by far the best prowess and he's going to be doing really good at combat we're only going to allow these other people to go into combat because we don't really care if we lose them that much yark paulo who pretty much blows at everything he was our previous marshal dude has seven in marshal seven in tree and that's all he's got he does have 11 prowess though so he's going to make for a good knight the only other people we have in our council that i really care about losing is togba who has 15 diplomacy he's a solid chancellor the dude has nine prowess though so we're going to want him to go into battle and our court shaman is actually not able to fight apparently even though he's got seven prowess, we're not able to send him in a battle, which is completely fine. The dude has 16 learning. We want him to just focus on religious relations, and that's 
that's going to increase our piety by 0.8 a month. Finally, we can choose our lifestyle. And since we're diplomacy focused, we got a four star diplomacy education. We're going to focus on, yes, you guess it, diplomacy. We're going to do a family focus that's going to increase our leader's fertility by 20%. So we're going to be pumping out more babies and it gives us a bit more diplomacy, which doesn't really do much for us right now, but it's going to help us in a bit here. Because the kid's so young, he's only 17, and I really like this about him, he doesn't have any perks filled out yet. So we get to choose the correct tree with what we're trying to do. Usually when you pick a leader, if they're well, if they're really old, they'll have like an entire tree filled out already, which can arguably be a good thing. You get to start with a potentially some really powerful bonuses if you have a really old guy as your leader, but then he's going to die soon and that could suck for you because what if his heir sucks? We're going to get more into the heir situation later, but yeah, it's not a good thing when your heir sucks. Let's just put it that way. All right, so we're done with our planning for the most part and we're going to get into what we're trying to do here, which is quickly expand our tiny chiefdom of debris. We're going to want to make a duchy ASAP and if we click on duchy titles, we can see that we're a part of a pretty small duchy over here if we capture just two more counties in crew we can make a duchy as long as we have 125 gold which right now we're completely broke but hopefully with these upcoming battles if we're a bit lucky we could get a lot of gold before we do any conquering of our neighbors we're gonna have to wait for a bit because our men at arms are not raised oh here we go we got married and we're gonna pick up another 350 prestige but yeah we're gonna have to wait probably like a few weeks for these bush hunters to raise and like yeah on february 6th which is a month later from when we started we got 70 bush hunters total raised up this is technically enough to go to war but we're not going to do that just yet we're going to raise them all as raiders and that's going to put our 70 bowmen on the field as well as our levies and we're going to go raid this nearby village and this is kind of multi-purpose we can pick up some gold from these guys but more importantly when we come back we should have raised more archers unless you can't raise them while you're raiding which i'm pretty sure you can and yeah this guy's not going to fight back we're able to get that raid off for free and i don't know what this guy's doing with his 670 troops he might be coming over to raid i don't know if he can fight us if he wants to ideally we just head back into our territory get the loot back and then disband these guys and yeah we brought back 15 gold 15 prestige we're going to disband these guys. And okay, cool. This is pretty ideal for us. These 670 troops are attacking this dude. The reason why this guy has so many troops is he does start with two castles. And dude's pretty rich too. He's got 98 gold. So if we do take him prisoner, we can ransom him for quite a bit. And let's see, while we were doing that, did we raise more archers? It looks like we did not. So we have to have them inside our territory to raise them, which is okay. In that case, we're just going to chill for a bit, I guess. We did get another knight in our court. This guy, Gibwe, has pretty much the minimum amount of prowess. He's not that good. He's going to only cost three gold though. The dude does have 12 in stewardship though so we can have him replace our steward and holy crap we just picked up this guy Kanawa beats well we didn't pick him up yet but I've not seen a knight with 31 prowess in the game this is the highest I've ever seen dude's a legendary blade master and he also has an amazing commander trait Organizer increases movement speed. By far my favorite commander trait because it allows you to run enemies down. The only problem with this guy is, yeah, he's going to cost all of our gold in a few months here because we're only getting 1.2 a month. So 30 gold's a lot for us. We're going to wait for a bit longer and let our bush hunters replenish up to more. And I actually want to pick this new knight up before we do anything. We're almost at 30 gold. We're at 29. And well, bam, we're at 31 gold. So we got this new amazing knight. If he dies in battle, then that's really going to suck because that's going to be all of our gold down the drain. Then again, a high prowess skill not only increases the knight's damage, it also increases their survivability. So this dude's probably not going to die in a battle. But yeah, the dude's nuts. We're going to force him to be a knight with the rest of our knights. He's not going to be much use in our council anyways. And we're now going to attack our neighbor over here that has the 500 troops. He's currently got 576 rays and he's attacking our other neighbor over here in the siege of Boo Boo. He's only got three months left, but we're about to ruin his whole plan here. By declaring war on him and conquering crew, his capital, it's only going to cost us 50 piety. We have 239, so that's going to be completely fine. And yeah, we're going to now raise all of our armies over here and pretty much before this guy can react well he's trying to react right now but we can make Kanawa our commander and he has the organizer trait which increases our movement speed and so yeah we're going to do that and this guy should not be able to run from us and there we go we caught him so we have 605 troops we actually outnumber him but the main thing is we have 310 bush hunters these things are doing 38 damage whereas normal levies only have 10 damage bush hunters also have around double the toughness as a levy levies have 10 bush hunters have 18 and the majority of this dude's army is levies he does have 13 bush hunters but yeah he's pretty pretty screwed here. He does have a battle advantage because not only is he leading his own soldiers, our great leader is sitting on the sidelines just kind of watching. He's also evidently got a good vantage point defending in the jungle so it gives him another plus six. But yeah, it's not really going to matter much. Our bush hunters should just absolutely tear him a new one. Mainly we just hope that our knights don't get killed here or don't get maimed. Like actually their leader got maimed I think. That guy looked like their leader, but it wasn't. Please no one get maimed or killed. Our champion was slain. No. Yarkopolo, that was the dude who had, I think, like 13 prowess or something. It wasn't our main guy. That's all I care about. Our champion killed one of them. 
That's not ideal. We'd rather capture them, not kill them. We actually did capture some of them. And let's see, Yark Paolo did have 10 prowess. So that was a pretty solid night we lost in that battle, but that's okay. We captured two prisoners and hopefully these guys are gonna be solid. Eh, this guy's only got five prowess. He's wounded though, so it's gonna go up to seven once he heals up. And this guy only has three prowess. He got maimed and dude's overall not that good. He was okay before he got wounded and maimed. He had, I guess, nine prowess, but yeah, that all went to crap once he got maimed. Unfortunately, we can't ransom these knights for gold. Their leader does not care about them. And so I think the only thing really to do is to recruit them. Even if they're not that good, well, this guy's gonna be okay with his seven prowess once he heals up. But like pay really blows. He could just be an extra knight though that we'll have sitting around in case the worst happens and we end up losing a ton of knights or something. But yeah, now to our conquest of this guy's territory. So we kind of did a little cheap shot on him and attack him while he was at war, which is perfect. Nothing wrong with a little cheap shot. And ooh, this guy is getting sieged by Nana Monon of Bubo. So Bubo, the faction that this guy was attacking is now on the offense and he's bringing the fight to this guy. He actually can't siege this thing too because, oh, okay, he's fighting this guy. So their army of 325 units, you couldn't really see it, but it was heading back and it ended up catching Nanan Monon over here. And we're gonna be able to get here in time, I think, to help this guy out. 207 versus 325, but like we're there. And yeah, we're reinforcing Nanan Muno. We do have a negative 34, negative 43 battle advantage. Opponent is recently disembarked. Maybe the guy who we were helping out, Bubo, was disembarked and he attacked from the sea. I didn't see, and that actually I think led to us losing a few more troops. We're at 500 now. I didn't see how many we started with, but yeah, it's not really gonna matter. We're sieging this now with our good friends over here, the army of Bubo, and this is gonna give us a bunch of war progress for capturing his castle. One thing I will say is the army of Bubo did initiate the siege and, oh crap, our castle's getting raided over here. Oh no. We got raided. Oh, we caught this guy though. That's good. We have 559, they have 444. The thing that sucks is we did lose our progress in the siege. I thought Nan and Bubo would just continue it, but yeah, he's not going to. We have a negative one battle advantage here, but the dude only has two knights. We have four apparently, and we have a good amount of units, 400 up. He's got 61 only, and most of his units are running now. And we're running a few of them down, and yeah, we just recaptured their loot and their prestige. We're now gonna go back and siege this guy who we were attacking originally. We still have way more troops in him, we're at 500. And now I actually feel better about attacking this castle, because I'm not sure if the guy who was helping us siege it was gonna get any of the loot, like say we capture some prisoners here, where are they gonna go over to Nan and Boo Boo? I don't know. And ideally here we capture like this guy or his wife or something, that'd be super ideal. Oh, and his army's actually back. Is he gonna fight us here? Got 175 troops up. Yeah, he actually wants to fight us, which is crazy. He's gonna get absolutely destroyed here. And he's hoping to take out enough troops so that we have to stop the siege, but it's not going to happen. And nice, we capture their leader, that's amazing. We can ransom him for 50 gold, that's perfect. We could end the war here, but we don't care about ending the war that much. We're gonna get a huge amount of war progress anyways for capturing this castle and so yeah we're going to release this dude and we're back down to 34 percent war progress because of our battles that we won but that's soon going to change and ooh, we got our new heir let's see does he have the beautiful trait was it he does that's awesome okay so this is the dream run right here actually he starts out life with an extra three diplomacy 30 percent fertility and 30 attraction which is actually quite a big one there's a lot of things we can do with that 30 attraction or there will be once he takes over the kingdom one day and yeah we did we capture this guy again holy crap i've actually never seen that where you capture their leader in a battle and then you capture him in the siege afterwards we also captured his heir the thing that's awesome about this is this dude had well when we attacked him i thought he had like around 90 gold but i guess he had more than that because he already paid us out 50 gold he's about to pay us out 50 gold more which is going to lower our war score i'm not sure if we're still going to beat 100 after this 38 percent for battles one 10 percent for occupying his capital and then 48 percent for occupying his counties because he only has two so we basically get 50 percent for occupying a county and then capturing an heir gives us 50 percent more but what i'm thinking is we can just ransom this kid off we could have got 50 gold for him but this dude does not have 50 gold so we're just going to take the 20 and we'll see if that still keeps us at 100% war score. It's not actually. So we're going to put us at 96, which is okay. We're just going to have to maybe help this guy siege his castle, I guess. Like this dude's getting double teamed. And just by sieging this for just a little bit, this is giving us some good war score here. We're at 98%, 99 and 100. We're done with the war now. After doing that, we're gonna send our armies back home, disband them, or I guess not, because we're at war still with this dude who has 540 troops, 200 bush hunters as well. That's a bit scary. Or does he have 200 bush hunters? It says he has two regiments of them, but I don't know if they're raised yet. Oh, this is not good. 
This guy has 1,200 troops. 514 of them are bush hunters. Oh no. I don't know how this guy raised so many troops. Like he's just got one county. I'm pretty sure he raised a mercenary company. That's the only explanation I could think of, which is super unlucky. Usually the AI really never does that. And it's just unlucky that the guy who's attacking us so happens to have raised a mercenary company. Like there's only one being employed right now and it costs 144 gold. I don't even know how the guy had 144 gold to pick it up, but that's gotta be it, I think. Cause the mercenary company does come with 314 bush hunters and the guy happens to have 500 114 and he has a regiment of 314 of them so yeah he pretty much went all in on this like he's going for mutual destruction here somehow he still has 75 gold left over by the way and i'm wondering if that's because he started with a greedy trait if he starts with extra gold maybe that's what it is there's a couple things we can do to counter this though so i was checking our daughter to see if we can marry her off to anyone that has a really good alliance power and i was looking over the alliances there's nothing that's really close except for this guy who does have 934 troops he does have 300 guinean uplanders as well and if we marry her off to this guy once she's of age and starts having babies those babies are going to belong to him but that's okay she doesn't have any special traits anyways so yeah, we're going to do that for the alliance that we're going to get and we can now call our ally to help us here for free because we're defending in this war also enough time has passed so we can pick up a diplomacy perk we're going to go for befriend which is going to allow our great leader to do this befriend scheme and we're going to start doing this on anyone we can that has a really high chance of it working like there's an 85 percent chance of it working on this guy so we're just going to do it on him it's only going to take us nine months and in the meantime we're going to start preparing for our war so two more knights showed up our court this one only has 13 prowess not that good but we're gonna pay three gold to pick him up this dude's a bit better he's actually only three gold too but he's got 15 prowess this time we're not gonna put both those guys down into our army and we're not gonna force our weaker knights to be in our army and we're gonna raise them all in debris and conjoin them with our main army meanwhile we got our neighbor up here with 850 troops he's gonna be coming in to help us out and yeah this should be enough to crush this guy i mean the dude does have 500 bush hunters but this dude does have some special troops of his own who apparently do get countered because they're skirmishers so those those actually aren't going to help us too much. I really don't know exactly how this battle is going to go. Like we have 520 bush hunters of our own now and he is 514 and we have more levies combined with our ally. So yeah, we should win. We just got to make sure we don't get caught before our ally gets here. Which he should start coming over here because East crew is about to start getting sieged. There he goes. He's turning around. Our ally is taking a while though. Hopefully he gets here in time. It'd be annoying to have to re-siege East crew. There we go. He's coming in. We just want him to meet up with our troops and then we'll start. Yep. There we go. We're going to start going in. He has half siege progress already done. And these guys are fully, oh, okay, they're running, nice. Yeah, we have 1600 troops total. And we have just as many bush hunters as them, like we should totally win this. We actually might be a bit early than our ally on this, which is not gonna be good, because we move quicker. Or I guess the ally is keeping up. And this guy's gonna fight over here, by the way. It says we'll probably win, but I think we're definitely gonna win here. Hopefully the guy doesn't embark in time. Crap, he's trying to leave. That'd be really annoying. We have to just kind of sit around and wait to see what he does, which would be really annoying. Please catch him. He's not going to be able to bark in time though. I think this bar is not going to fill up to the full arrow. Yeah, we caught him. Very nice. We have 1,676. He has 1,234. And yeah, our skirmishers are only doing 25% of their normal damage because they're countered by bush hunters. These getting uplanders are not good in this area of the map because a lot of these tribes around here have access to bush hunters. Looks like we are somehow getting a battle advantage here, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. We have way more martial skill in them, I guess. And oh, we actually weren't using the commander that boosts our movement speed. We were using this guy who increased our maximum battle roll. I guess we got a really good battle roll here and th like this time we got a really bad battle roll so i actually swapped the advantage to their favor each time we do take casualties it will do like a new battle roll and yeah we got a really good one that time went up to 20 percent to our favor and someone got wounded our champion yusuf got wounded but that's okay we're crushing these guys it's not gonna matter our champion was slain oh no sound yada i don't remember that name being anything too amazing yeah this guy's retreating we did not capture any of them. That's okay. See the guy who was slain. Oh, this guy sucks. He did have the organizer commander trait though. Was he the only one who had it? I'm pretty sure we had another dude who had that trait. Yeah, Kanawa had that trait. We're going to make him the commander now. And we're going to bring the war to this dude who's currently getting raided. That was a crazy unlucky thing that happened. Scheme fail, I guess. The 88% chance failed. That's unlucky. But yeah, I was thinking about just starting this run over because we got such bad RNG with this guy recruiting those mercenaries. Oh, can we run this guy down too? Do we want to even? He's got 300 bush hunters up. We have 500. Like, we could win this for sure. Let's swap out the commander and let's get Yusuf back in here. Yeah, let's actually do this. Let's fight him. We have 700 versus 800, but we have better troops. We have better knights as well. We have five. He's only got four. Oh, crap. I just let this go in like four speed. Oh, and yeah, we're actually winning the battle now. We have 500 versus 499. There's actually a no side advantage here. We got a better roll here. 
Our advantage is three now. Our champion Yusuf was wounded. Yusuf's solid, I think, right? Oh yeah, he's our commander. That sucks. Our injured marshal. Yusuf was severely injured. Oh no. That's really bad, actually. We might need to pick up a physician to save him here. Because yeah, he could die from those wounds. Champion wounded one of them. And nice, our ally's finally here. That's awesome. Good job, dude. You really showed up when we needed you, man. He's going to help us siege this, I guess, which is fine. But yeah, we should definitely maybe search for a physician here. We can do this every 12 months and hopefully we're going to pick up some decent physician who's not going to make us bankrupt. So we got this girl, Stormty, for 50 gold. She does have a two-star physician trait, though. And then this dude has no physician trait. So having the physician trait is kind of important for your physician, but if you just have someone with good learning, they can also be a physician. And so we're just not going to pick up either of them. And we're going to make our court shaman be our physician for just 10 gold. And I believe he can be the shaman and he can be the physician. And we're going to hope that ends up helping out Yusuf here. And we really don't want him to die from these wounds. He is does have an infected wound oh no and it's aggravated a failed treatment has aggravated this character's wound oh no this could be bad we could lose our marshal which we do have someone that could replace him like pain wayne actually has 15 so we only lose two marshal skill off of that and what's this guy doing over here he's going for our capital that's annoying by the time he can siege that though we're going to be done with sieging his only territory i think it is over here yeah this guy only has one territory so once we take this the war is going to be over and yeah we took it we're going to enforce our demands on this guy and we get 15 gold because he was the attack here we also get 150 prestige which is nice and yeah now we can finally disband our army that was such a long war one thing i will also say is though we did get pretty bad rng with that guy making the mercenary company we did get a lot of extra gold on this run we're really rich like richer than we should be right now and we can create the duchy of crew as long as we hold three of the counties in here which we only own two right now but if we attack this guy over here at bubo which i think we're going to do pretty soon we're going to let our troops replenish a bit more though like let's get up to 260 there we go 260 bush hunters in each regiment we raise 700 troops this guy does have around the same though well he has 663 he only has 100 bush hunters though his champions aren't that amazing either like one of them's good 16 prowess but then the rest of them kind of blow like really blow and meanwhile here's our knights 31 prowess 17 11 3 and 0 Tipo, what are you doing in the army? And no, we're getting raided, really? That's annoying. This is definitely the most aggro I've seen my nearby neighbors pretty much ever. And no, Yusuf, that sucks. Dude was a decent knight, a decent marshal. But we're going to succeed him by Pain Wayne. The dude has a cooler name anyways. And he only has two less marshal than Yusuf had. So there's now only a 5% chance of finding a new commander or knight each month. And maybe we'll find a better marshal. They don't seem too hard to come by usually, but... We've been kind of unlucky here, I think. But yeah, our siege is over with, and this guy's now attacking us. We're going to meet him in battle. Like, he seems like he wants to fight. He's not pulling back. We have 747 troops, by the way. I think once we enter our territory, we just picked up some more. He's got only 80 bush hunters. We have 547, and our champion killed one of them. Very nice. They're down to four champions now, and we outnumber his troops. Two to one. Three to one now, actually. Our champion killed one of them. Every time I see killed, I get scared, because I think it's one of our champions getting killed, maybe. But yeah. Can we capture their leader? That'd be ideal. No. But after winning the battle, he is going to escape with only 200 troops. We're just going to chase him down into his territory. We're going to attack him once he gets back into his territory. Like right now, we can attack him actually. There we go. We caught him. He has 265. And all of our bush hunters actually get no advantage. His included. We're fighting on just planes here, I guess. Dry lands, apparently. It's like the one dry lands in this entire area. And nice. We captured this guy who's got 17 marshal, actually. He could be our new marshal. Like, he's not going to replace Yusuf. No one could really truly replace Yusuf. But he'll have to do, and Yusuf's spirit will live on inside of him. And yeah, that's going to be it for this war, which is three territories inside crew. We can now make the duchy of crew. For a good amount of our gold, it's going to give us a bunch of press but more importantly we're now a mighty Krontahin and there's a bunch of things that gives us one more champion limit it also allows us to make another men at arms regiment and that's gonna allow us to put 300 more bush hunters on the field for a good amount of prestige so we finally got our duchy set up and now we can start to make vassals so we can start to snowball and we're hopefully going to be snowballing through all of Africa within the next three days as in three days the new wow essential season launches and I'm gonna do a small video on that and what that is exactly but in my opinion it's gonna be a pretty big deal and I'm making quite a bit of content on that and yeah with that I want to thank you all for watching if you are liking Crusader Kings and drop a like and I will see you in the next one.